Alrighty guys, so how's she going today? So, uh, sun's finally out for freaking once. It's been under for sort of like days. It's just freaking non stop fucking raining over here. The antelions are growing like crazy, but they don't really have much for heads on them anymore. I think they're dying off now for the year, but. Uh, as you guys probably could tell, um, this whole week went by without not doing anything. I'm not doing a lot of, a lot of groundwork. Um, the uh, 1586 is still sitting at the farm waiting to start breaking ground. Well, it just kept fucking raining all week, so we couldn't do a goddamn fucking thing. Now it's looking a little bit better. Um, there's going to be a couple days of kind of this kind of weather right now, you know, cloudy, partly cloudy, but sunny kind of too, no rain. And then there's going to be two days of rain, and then possibly it looks like a whole week of nothing, just some clouds and sun and decent temperatures. So, but a lot of other farmers have already been in the fields. Um, we haven't been in the fields yet, obviously. I think it was moving, I didn't even know it. But, uh, yeah, so, I guess probably next week, I guess, is probably when we'll get in, um, unless he comes sometime this week, and we just hit it once at least. I mean, it needs to be, it's never going to dry if it don't get worked out. That's the thing. Um, he kind of, he always says that if you work it too much, then it'll dry out. Well, Sure, it'll dry out, but that's, in a way, you kind of needed to do that so you can fucking plant, you know, within a certain amount of days. So, if it was me, I would have been in, in the field a couple of weeks ago when we had that nice stretch of, you know, sunny seven days of sun and no rain, and was, you know, no clouds hardly even all. And it, it was good weather, so that was a good time to be out there breaking ground and, and planting something because the, the field next to our place they planted that field when we had that good stretch of weather before, before all this crappy rain moved in their stuff's already up it's already up out of the ground now if we would have planted grass or something in that field ours would have already been up so getting a little bit uh I mean, you can't help mother nature but you know you can't also help can't help him either because he's busy doing shit at his farm too because he's the one that's going to be bringing the stuff down you know and he'll just hook it up to my tractor but <clears throat> you know it's just it's kind of annoying when you know you plan something for a certain day and you're you're getting ready to, to go do the work, you know, and all of a sudden you get freaking downpoured and then there's like a whole week worth, a whole week of just non-stop fucking rain. You know, like, we didn't need that. Maybe one day of a good rain would have been all right. You know, maybe a good shower. Just, you know, enough to wet the ground, obviously, but then that's it. We don't need all this freaking rain. It doesn't serve us any, any good because we don't have nothing in the fields. It does the hate good, but... Most of it's probably just going to end up getting ripped up anyway. I don't know. I would probably just say go ahead and freaking cut it. At least once anyway. You know, the old hay. And then bale it. And then get the bales off right away. And just start breaking ground afterwards. You know, because now the hay's doing good out there now since it's rained. So we might as well just fucking just cut it. And it'll be June or July probably. Well, if he would get here in June or July, we'd have a good hay crop. Because the weeds wouldn't be going to seed quite yet. So, not part of me going out uh, starting next month, and uh, I'm going to be starting to spray weeds already. I've seen uh, uh, what are they called? Thistles. I've seen a few thistles already floating around. So now would be the time to go out there and start spraying them. So I've only seen a few. So I haven't seen any. Uh, 
Burdocks yet or anything, but they're, well, I've seen a few, but they're not coming up yet, you know, I mean, they're, they're so little yet, but at the beginning of next month, they should be up enough to, where I can probably go spray them. I don't know if I'm going to be working the whole fucking piece up or not, or just work the square piece up, you know. That's another thing, too. Diesel fuel is going to be very expensive. And I may not have the money to do that, so... Just going to have to do a little bit here and there, and, you know, one little fuel at a time. It's better than nothing. So... <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so... Hopefully... We'll, uh, get into the fields, I guess, here at some point. Um, either sometime this, I think we could go this week if he would just get here. I don't care if it's wet underneath. I mean, really to just, what I want to do is just rip the damn weeds out. Well, you only have to go about an inch into the ground. Well, a good inch of the soil is already dry. It's under that is what's still wet. Well, don't work that then, just leave it. The thing I want to do is I want to get the fucking weeds out because they're not going to do us any good later on in the year when we do have a crop in there. It's just, it, it'll be fighting. So, rip them up now. Get rid of them. And I do have that John Deere cultivator of mine that I did, that I pulled out of the weeds. Well, that's only a nine footer. You know, that's not very big. Um, the other one that the old timer uses, which is what we used last year, that's a 20 footer. So, from what he said, it was a 20 footer. So, I don't know. But something, see, and I can't just go hook up to his cultivator and start pulling it because for one, it's not my cultivator, that big John Deere one, that 20 footer, that's not mine. So I can't touch it. So, and another reason why I can't touch it is because for one, I don't have a pin and two, it's got the wrong coupler ends on it. It's got a different style on it compared to International. I still have the factory International couplers on my tractor. Um, I guess they're different on, on a, you know, on a different tractor or whatever. Because it's been hooked up to the big, big John Deere the last couple of years, so he's got diff different ends on his. Um, well, I don't think anyone's even using International couplers anymore. You know, they're going to something else now, so. But, you know, what are you going to do, right? So, but that little nine-footer, that nine-foot culvert I, I pulled out of the weeds there, that was really just going to be used for the gardens. Um, the uh, north garden, I have not seeded it yet. I have not even turned it yet. And we are getting stuff in there, like the stuff growing in there from last year, but we're not going to keep any of it. I think we're just going to bury it all. Start over fresh, and then there's a lot of grass in there. There's a lot of weeds, and that garden is just a son of a bitch for weeds. Well, it's a son of a bitch for. I mean, the weeds are really bad in that garden, you know. And well, they're I mean, they're bad in every garden, but we have a weed, some kind of a weed or whatever it is. But it's like a really low weed, but it crawls along the ground. So and it, it you know it gets bigger along the ground. It doesn't go up or whatever. It it crawls along the ground and just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And those sons of bitches have a good root on them too if you let them go long enough. So and I'm not gonna have my tiller this year, so I'm not gonna be able to till in between the rows. So I don't even know if we will garden. We might just put a couple things in, and that's about it. Um. So. What else am I gonna do, right? So, but yeah, but yeah, I definitely would like to get my hands on a, on a smaller tractor. Uh, that 1586 would definitely be too big for garden work, but it'll do for now. I'd like to get something way smaller, you know, like, like maybe a 966 without a cab or something like that, or, or whatever, even if I could find something, I don't know, somewhere around there, something like that, it would work, you know. Something smaller. So, whatever. Or even a 7, 8, 706 or an 806 or something like that. But that's out of price range right now. So, but uh, yeah. So, 
But then anyway, that's about it on the farm. I mean, there's not much I can do because I don't have all this equipment to be doing it. So, what are you gonna do? I know the one guy said that little John Deere cultivator of mine, that little nine foot pipe, wouldn't be the best thing. Well, it doesn't have to be the best thing for what I want to use it for. You know, I don't care if it doesn't really. I think it'll work fine. You know, but. That there's just going to be to work the ground up for the first time for in the gardens or if I decide to do the big fields, which I don't know if I will or not because that thing's too damn small. It'll take me forever to do that. It'd be good to take it around the outside rounds of my fields, like where the wet spots are, and break them up and give them to dry out. The rest of the field could probably be let go until we can get the big cultivator in, but I don't know. We'll see what the hell goes on with that, but... If we don't get in this week, and if we don't get in next week, then I don't know what the hell's going on because you can't wait forever because then your crops are not going to get done. In, like, we're not gonna we're not gonna have hay. I'm not gonna break ground, rip my ground up if the hay in the field and the grain field's not ready yet to be cut. So I want it to be fucking ready by end of July or late, you know, or even after July. But. The crop should have already been in the field. That's the thing. You know. But our field was still kind of wet too at the time. But on the top side, it, like up on the hills, it was dry. Well, why not just rip the damn hills, you know, and, and then it'll dry out. It needs to be ripped or cultivated or something to dry out. It's not going to dry out having full of freaking grass. It's not going to do any damn good. So, and I was going to find, I did find a couple of, uh, I know one guy was recommending to hook a, uh, a, uh, clevage pin up to the cultivator and just pull it with that. Uh, I tried to find the biggest one that we possibly had, and I literally, well, the one that I have, the biggest one that I found, it's just not quite big enough. It needs to be about a half an inch thicker, you know, wider part or whatever, and I ain't going to bend it. That'll just break it. So I'm just gonna go to the hardware and I'm gonna take the old one with me and see if I can find something that's about an inch or something bigger than that. And then after that, it should be good. And uh, I think the North Garden is pretty dry now. Like it probably could be worked. It needs to be worked because it's full of fucking weeds. But what good is it really gonna do you anyway? Because we don't have a tiller to keep the weeds down. But I guess we just do what we can. So, but yeah, anyways, um, another story here is uh, if you guys have watched that CV video from last night, um, you guys can hear that was working. Well, it's always kind of worked. It's never really had an issue not working, but um, the Ranger was never, or, well, it always had that noise problem in there, you know. And uh, I was kind of able to figure some of it out, but I, it's still there. But the problem is, is that it's see right like back then or whenever um, channel four was our channel. That's the channel that we used, and in channel nineteen, obviously, I listened to truckers. Um, channel four seems to have a louder noise on it. Than it needs to be. So I don't, something, something, something wrong with channel four. Channel four always gave me more noise than I needed. So I got, I just, I went to channel. Uh, I just went to channel one because channel one is like the quietest. And uh, so I just scanned channel one and channel uh, four or nineteen. And uh, my radio has been a lot more quieter. Surprisingly, it's been a lot more quieter. Um, it seems like even when the fan kicks on, I don't have to turn the squelch up even up to halfway. It, I can have it a little bit below half now. So I think it all depends on what channels you're, you're using. So actually the CB radio has been a little bit more quieter now than, than before. So... So I'm not using channel 4 anymore, I'm just using channel 1. 
And then I'm listening to channel, uh, channel 19. Because that's uh, obviously a lot more quieter. Workbench is a mess too. And I'll, I'll explain why it's a freaking mess. But, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, that's, the, I think that's kind of the main reasons to why my radio was being such a loud little bitch. That's because, um, Channel 4 had a louder noise put on it, even when the, the scorch was set to even halfway. There was some kind of a louder noise on it than all their, than Channel 1 or, or the other channels. So, so I said the hell with Channel 4 and I went to Channel 1. Channel 1's a lot, a lot quieter. And I can put the squelch, like, see, normally I'd have to have it halfway. Okay, and that's just to even overcome any freaking noise that you would hear from the fans. Um, but technically now I can have it a little bit more like this now. I can turn it down just a hair a bit more. Which isn't a lot, but again, depending on noise levels, you can turn it down quite a bit too. Or with the fans kick on, you can just turn it up a little bit and... It seems to be all right. I do still kind of hear it from time to time, but I don't know if it's making much of a difference or not. You know, like if maybe the power cord is actually helping. So I mean, I don't really know, but I don't know. That's just what I'm doing right now. It seems to be working better now a little bit. It's not as loud, and it's you don't hear the fan quite as often, but you still hear it. It's just not as loud. So, that's what's been going on there. I noticed that kind of yesterday. Um, kind of noticed that yesterday. So, yeah. Wait for this guy to freaking leave. Cause he's just going to cock over the program if I try to talk. I'm sure he'll leave in the next couple minutes here. But, uh, that, my workbench here is a mess. So, I'm going to clean that up as well. But, uh, yeah, so, I don't know. CB radios, I think, is working a little bit better. Um, I tried to listen on the uh, house radio. Well, last night, anyway, I was... I was I was at the farm there, and I just happened to go on the channel 40, and there was some, there was a, a couple of people talking there, and they were, you know, acting like idiots and whatever, and they were just talking about shit, and I was just listening, and went to the house radio, and all I could hear was static, but then there was someone on channel 6, too. When I was at the farm over there, I could definitely hear people talking on channel 6. So I went over to the house radio, because I figured, out ah, they'd still be talking even when I got home. And sure enough, they were. But I could hear them on the house radio, it's just that they were very, very faint. And there was a lot of static as well, so... Possibly, I would, if I want to listen to that kind of stuff in the house, I would definitely have to get a bigger antenna. That little workman there is not going to cut it, so... So, if I feel like it later on this year, I'll probably upgrade it. Then this, I'll probably. I'm not sure if I want to go with the Antron 99 though. I think I may go up to to the uh, Antron uh, 2000, whatever it is. That's like a 21 footer or something stupid like that. You might as well just go with the biggest one you possibly can and be done with it. So, and uh, be done with it. So. <clears throat> so, I don't know if that would even help any or not. I mean, it would probably help my range. I mean, I'd be able to go out further, but will I be able to receive further out, you know, a thing? Probably. I don't know, but all you can do is buy the damn thing and try it. See how it plays out, but not right now. Probably later on this fall, because i got too many other things going on right now. and I'm trying to. I got my bill from the gas station there when they put those tires on the those rims, they put in a couple of new tubes. I thought that bill would be well over a hundred bucks. It was only like sixty-five dollars. So I'm like, ah, fuck it, paid, paid on payday and be done with it. So, because I charged it, you know, but 
They didn't charge a lot. I think it was only like 30 bucks for 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 labor. I don't know what the, really what the tubes cost. I suppose they weren't very much, but it got the bill up to $65, so I figured screw it. Not that big then. Not that big of a deal. I could pay that off in one month to be done with it. So, but I'm also buying a few things off my sister too and whatever. I got one thing here already. Um, I'm trying out right now. I haven't made a video on it, but I will here now, but it's just an experiment that I'm trying. It's working out, but I'm not liking what I have to do. And uh, those black those black things there are kind of a hint. Um, so, like I said, I'm just trying this out. And, uh, you know. So, I guess what I ended up doing here is I, uh, this here, if you can see it, that big black thing, that's all, well, that's new too, that shelf thing. Well, I'm tearing that shelf thing apart. So, because it's no good anyway, it's all kind of junk, but the, uh, the actual shelving inside is actually really good yet. It's really nice and thick. And my signs will fit on there, so I'm going to probably mount my signs onto that, and I can mount them to whatever I need to mount them to, like even to the fence here. Yes, well, I made this. This is my sister's old bed frame thing. She didn't want it anymore, so I, uh, each piece, there's two pieces here, and I just bolted them together. Uh, they're about, each piece is about six feet long, so that gives you about 12 feet. So, you're a little over 12 feet. Uh, what this is supposed to be, is this is supposed to be a gate. And it's not a very high gate. It don't have to be that high for, for what I'm using them for. But the problem with this bed frame is that it's a folding up type. And you just can't shove a pin in it to stop it from folding. You can't just do that. So, what I ended up doing, which I don't like, I didn't like to have to do it, is I had to tear my old redneck roller apart because I needed the parts out of that. So I don't have a redneck roller anymore. Well, that's fine. I don't really need it anyway because I'm not probably going to be doing anything with the trail this year. Um, the trail does need some work. I did get on a trail down there in the bush a couple, yeah, about a week ago. There's a couple of trees down in the way, and when I'll get around to chopping them up, I don't fucking know. I may not even do anything with it this year. It's just I don't have time for it. I got a bunch of crap going on. But um, what I ended up doing was taking the, the bed frame and putting it straight and putting these braces in, which were these angle iron things that I used for my redneck roller. It worked. It's well, they're still kind of bent, like they're still on it. They're you're probably not gonna be able to see it, but they're still kind of curved a little bit, kind of. They're still curved. You can probably see it on that one. That's it's really curved. Well, you can't get them any straighter than that because, um, you just can't. It won't let me get I can't, I don't know why I can't get it straight, but it won't let me get it straight. So, um, it doesn't, it ain't gonna matter anyway. So, I think there's still some slop in them, I think a little bit, but um, the bracing kind of will hold it. But I have to put another brace in here, because this is where I joined the two together. But the only thing that's holding it together are these two little bolts, and that ain't going to hold. So um, I'm going to have to run a brace across... I'll be able to bolt it where I bolted this. See, right here is a bolt, but they welded it obviously. But there's a, you know, the threaded part on the other side. So I may just have to thread one another piece onto there. I'm gonna do it here just so there's a brace going across it. Because now this is the the weakest link right here now. And these and these things are as tight as I can possibly get them, but they will probably loosen up over time. But um, I'm not sure if I'd have enough metal well I would if I cut that piece up because I want to do a double bracing I don't want to just have a single brace like I do on the top um you know. 
That piece is kind of short, but I guess I got another one here too that might be all right. So I didn't even see that one. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, oh, yeah. I could use that one probably. I spent probably about three hours or four hours yesterday just fucking with the bed. This old bed frame. Oh, this piece should be, should be more than plenty. What size is this anyway? This is brand new, but... This is what I was going to make my gate out of was this stuff, but... Um, yeah, this is a three-footer. This should be more than plenty enough, I think. But I would need so much of this. Yeah, how would you ever get that? Yeah, that would just be another fight. See, everything's kind of tweaked right now and bent. So, it'd be a fight to get this cross, this middle piece on. I might have to put it on the bottom, maybe. I don't know. Um, because that's going to be my linkest, or my weakest link now is right here in the middle. And, uh, it's uh, fairly heavy. It's not super heavy, but it's heavy enough. So, and then what I'm going to do, um, I measured it down there. I just, you know, I measured this and I went down there with, with my measurements and kind of measured it out. And it'll go almost the same length as that rope that I got down there now, but um not 100% sure how that went now, but I think I'm going to move that over a little bit more anyway, so my my trail will be a little bit straighter. But um, yeah, it's not very high. I think it's only about four feet high. I was thinking about stacking them, and it would just be a six foot gate, but it would be tall. But I don't really need it to be tall because it's going to be high enough that it should no one should drive over it you know so and I am gonna put my sign on here and everything too so hopefully they be able to see it but uh, if, they, if they smash through this then they got some serious fucking balls and it will have to, it will be pay, it's just gonna have to be payback time then you know, cause screw that. You're gonna smash my shit. I'm gonna make you pay for it. So, but I'm not really too sure what else I could do. Um, to put some extra strength in this, besides just put another cross beam right there, which is what that little three foot piece will be big enough. So that'll be big enough. Well, big enough for that. But on the top there, it seems kind of bent. So I don't know. It's probably the same at the bottom. I'll have to put it on, like, lay it on the ground. Yeah, that actually could be a reason why it's kind of bent. I'll have to put it on the ground and just lay it flat and then see if I can bolt them up. Um, but on payday, I have to get three chains because I'm going to chain this gate on. But it's obviously it's going to be a short chain. It's not going to be a long one or anything like that. But two will be kind of like the hinge for it and then one will be a lock. So I can put a padlock on it and lock it. So no one can, you know, just open it whenever the hell they feel like it. So. But at least I do have some holes here. I got a couple holes here. Um, right here. So if I wanted to put something here, I could. Um, you know. Flags or something. I could put some flags on there just to kind of make the you know the, the damn thing more visible so you can see it, um, or whatever. It's not going to do much good for strength wise because it's it's just going to bend. So it needs to be on an angle like these are here. So kind of suck that I had to do that, but you know it's the only way I could keep that the because see here are the hinges. These are, see, you know, it's a folding bed, so it hinges. But, you know, and there were feet right here, there were legs. I cut them off with the grinder. And then there were the bolt on legs that went on the ends. You could bolt them on there. I took them off as well. I got the, I got the bolts. So, um, I guess they're there too, but. 
these are the bolts that were holding the, those legs in, the outer ones. The middle ones were permanently stuck in place, so I just cut them, cut them with the grinder. Well, it's actually part of the hinging thing, too, part of the hinge, actually, so, yeah, couldn't really have that, so. But, it's coming along. I haven't touched it yet today. Um... Not too sure if I'm going to or not. I mean, I'm basically done with it. I'm just going to put in one more, maybe one or two more pieces there to strengthen up the middle. And see, the problem with that too is that this thing will probably be sitting on the ground, so it's not going to last forever because it will rot out real quick. Um, now, I could probably get some hinges and, you know, and weld them on. But then the thing is, I'd have to pull the post out and weld them, the other part to the post. That's just a lot of work. So chaining it, I think, will be better. Um, the chains will be bolted in place, so they ain't gonna be able to just unbolt them. And they're they're gonna be on there pretty damn tight too. So, and then on the other end, whatever end I choose to use, um, we'll have the have the one chain on it. To lock it into place. So I might even use where the legs bolted in there. I might just bolt the chain on to it and then just wrap it around it or whatever and then just chain it. So the chain would be kind of like permanently stuck to the fence or to the gate. You know, but then I'll be able to remove it if I need to later on. Or I'll be, and, I, and I'll be able to unhook it because it'll be padlocked. So because the yellow rope thing I want to move that to the north because I need it down there. So, because I put my other sign up here by the corner, and the damn bashers are still getting in the woods, going through. So, I know more. You fucking dirt bike fuckers are out there. I seen your fucking tracks going through there. So I need to put a sign down there. It won't stop them, but I'll be able to be able to put a rope there. So. My grandma's got some spare signs. I think she's got like two or three extras. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I'll use this for an, as an example. I might even use this. I'm going to drill holes through it, put my sign on there, and then I'm going to bolt it, or zip tie it, whatever, to the fence. Zip ties will probably hold it. Um, because while they're holding up on my other one there, because that one's zip tied to the rope. But it's not... Now, and I'm going to cut these shorter too. I don't need them this wide. I only, I only need them as wide as the sign. So I will trim them. Um, I might just use the grinder. It'll go a hell of a lot quicker probably. So. But I got to make sure this gate is well reinforced. It's going to hold. It's a redneck fence. But you know what? It'll work. So. I will have to do a little bit of cleanup down there too. I got some tree branches to remove and stuff like that to get this gate to fit, but that's not going to be a big super deal. I can do that, no problem. But so, uh, and I'll have to haul haul this freaking thing on my trailer because it's not going to fit on the big back on the back of Big Red. So it's barely going to fit on this trailer. I can tell now. <laughs> um, I mean, I could take it apart and then put it back together over there. You know, but I don't want, I don't feel like hauling all these fucking tools all over the place. So I just build the damn thing here, haul it there in one big piece, and put it up as one big piece. So, but I uh, yeah. So, but I got some other things in mind too to help hold this gate in place and stuff like that. Um, not too sure yet what I'm going to do, but. I got some general ideas. I think what it, what may help, but for now, I'm just going to worry about getting the strength put in this so it withstands wind and and opening and closing because it's not designed for that. Clearly, it's not designed for that. But I'm going to make it fit. I'm going to make it work. Um, I think if I put one brace there in the center, it'll put strength there where those two bolts are at, so then the bolts won't snap. There should be one on the bottom too. Which I may have to do. I don't know yet. We will see. But that's going to be my new gate. I think it's only going to be about four feet tall. But 
it's more than enough to stop a four-wheeler. I mean, like, they're not going to be able to climb over it. So, um, and if I wanted to, like, I could extend this up higher if I really wanted to. Like, I could just, you know, go get some more of that channel iron bullshit like that, you know, and just weld them on there, you know. This isn't, this isn't very thick steel, so you won't be able to really go crazy on the welding. You'd have to lightly weld it on there. You know, but I mean, I could add some, some extensions to it if I wanted to, or I could build something, whatever, get it up an extra foot or four feet, whatever. So, but that's going to be the new gate for down there in the bush, um, going into where I mow, uh, where all the junk is at, because that's where my yellow rope is up right now, and uh. I want to put this there in its place, and I want to put the yellow rope down there on the north end. So, but, yeah. So, anyways, guys, I guess I'm going to probably take off. Uh, my sister's going to go to the uh, golf course thingy that we have here in town, over there in North Dakota, and she's going to order some food. Um, I know you guys are probably laughing at my redneck gate, but, you know, whatever. It'll work, I think. It's certainly a hell of a lot. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than buying a gate at 13 feet long and however high, you know. And to get it shipped here, yeah, it's ridiculous. So first that, I, I just paid whatever she wanted for this, and you know, and that's good enough. So, but I'll put strength and stuff in it more later on. So, but anyway, guys, I guess I'm gonna probably take off and uh, go do a couple other things and. Uh, Take care of some other staff, because I'm don't know if I plan on working on that gate. Like I said today, I might, but I don't know. I'm basically done. I just got to put in a couple more braces, and then I'm done with it. So, alrighty, guys, I'm gonna take off. So I guess uh, have a good day and stuff and stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Take her easy.